tonight's headline. Good news, bad news. It's been an eventful week for President Trump filled with highs and lows. In good news, Trump is headed to Orlando on Tuesday, where he'll officially kick off his reelection campaign. Trump says they've received 100,000 ticket requests for the 20,000 seat venue. In more good news, he gets to redesign Air Force One, the president's plane. And he revealed mock-ups of new color schemes. These sorts of things, as we know, are his favorite part of presidenting. But the bad news is he's still got to do some hard stuff. There's that immigration issue. Uh, U.S. officials say Iran just fired a missile at one of our drones before attacking two tankers in the Gulf of Oman. And there's that pesky trade negotiation. On Thursday, 600 companies, including Walmart, Costco, and Target, warned the president that tariffs on China would seriously damage the U.S. economy, result in sweeping job losses, and hurt millions of consumers. Better sort that one out, Mr. President. And more bad news, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, Trump's trusted White House press secretary, announced she's leaving the job, a job she redefined over the course of her tenure by, well, not doing it. She gradually shortened the White House press briefings and then eventually canceled them all together. She'll be missed. But in good news, Trump says he's eager to fill the position and is not at all concerned about finding the right person for the job. He said, we have a lot of great people. We have a lot of people to choose from. We'll see. Some more good news. Trump is, quote, doing great in the polls, even better than in 2016, according to him in a tweet this morning. The bad news? No, he's not. The campaign's own internal polling has the president lagging in critical states like Pennsylvania and Michigan. The internal poll published by ABC News on Friday shows Trump trailing Joe Biden by huge margins in states he won in 2016. It shows Trump holding on in Texas by just two points against Biden, Texas. It also shows him trailing every Democratic presidential contender in head-to-head -head matchups. Trump's denied these findings and told his staff to do the same. Yesterday, his campaign claimed the leak numbers were outdated and, quote, meaningless. Okay, then, this is all normal. Moving right along, more good news. Trump gave a wide-ranging interview to George Stephanopoulos in which they discussed everything from the Mueller investigation to UFOs. Here is his take on that. Well, I think my great, our great pilots would know. Uh, and some of them really see things that are a little bit different than in the past. So we're going to see. But we'll watch it. You'll be the first to know. Yay! But though there's bad news, too, he's also in that interview admitting he'd probably take illegal information on his election opponents from foreigners. This is somebody that said, we have information on your opponent. Oh, let me call the FBI. Give me a break. Life doesn't the work FBI that way. The FBI director says that's what should happen. The FBI director is wrong. Your campaign this time around, if foreigners, if Russia, if China, if someone else offers you information on an opponent, should they accept it or should they call the FBI? I think maybe you do both. I think you might want to listen. I don't, there's nothing wrong with listening. If somebody called from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. You want that kind of interference in our elections? It's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. It's called oppo research. <laughs> well, here's what the campaign finance law says. It shall be unlawful for a person to solicit, accept, or receive a contribution or donation described as money or another thing of value in connection with a federal, state, or local election from a foreign national. <laughs> After two days of damage control, Trump sort of backpedaled during a call into Fox and Friends. If you don't hear what it is, uh, you're right. not going to know what it is. I mean, That's how can right. you report how something? How do you know it's bad you if you don't listen to it? So, Mr. President, I, no, no, they say, oh, right. he would, he would accept it. Well, if I don't listen, you're not going to know. Now, if I thought anything was incorrect or badly stated, I'd report it to the attorney general, the FBI. I'd report it to law enforcement. Absolutely. Here's the deal. Trump's about to head into campaign mode, as if he ever really left it. He'll hold huge rallies in which he'll colorfully and creatively slam the 2020 Democratic contenders. He'll lie about his polls or the Mueller investigation or the media. He'll boast about solving problems that he hasn't and in some cases that he created. And he may even from time to time accidentally tout his policy successes like tax reform, deregulation and record unemployment, 
We all know it's coming because we've seen it now for years. But unlike in the run-up to 2016, he's actually president now, and we still have real problems. All the tinkering with Air Force One paint colors won't make them go away. And Republicans seem far more interested in protecting Trump's 2020 re-election than in holding him accountable for the job he was elected to do in 2016. Here to discuss all the latest news, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger of Illinois. Welcome. Um, first, let's start with the biggest news of the week. And I don't mean the foreign dirt controversy, but I'll get to that. I think the biggest news of the week was this letter signed by 600 companies, including some of the biggest retailers like Walmart and Costco, begging the president to back down on Chinese tariffs. How seriously should he be heeding that warning? Well, I think you should take it seriously, but at the same time, first off, this is a fight we should add 20 or 30 years ago, and to be clear about that, because, you know, as China was more of a growing economy and we had less investment there, uh, but there is so much that is done by the Chinese government, by Chinese companies to steal our intellectual property and everything. We have yeah. to stand up for it. So I think it's important for, for these retailers to send the message, to, to be clear about what impact this is having, but I don't think that should be the thing that basically turns off the tariffs and have, a, have us back down, because I think we're in this deep enough now that we have to win. And by winning, I don't mean China loses everything. I just mean getting to a fair trade situation where we can actually treat each other as, uh, as companions, I guess, in trading yeah. and not so much as adversaries. But do you think that Trump is at risk of, of losing some voters over these tariffs, especially in states where agriculture, um, uh, you know, might, might be hit real hard? Yeah, I, th I think there's always a risk, uh, and I think the president knew that when he did it. Um, but look, like in my district, for instance, I have a lot of yeah. agriculture. We've been hit really hard with these rains and flooding. That's going to have as much of an impact as anything. Yeah. Uh, but they are concerned about tariffs. But I'll tell you what's interesting I see is these farmers are saying, yes, it's hurting my bottom line. Yes, I don't like what's going on just from a bottom line perspective, but we're with the president and he needs to win. Where I got a right. little nervous is when you start talking into Mexico and some, you know, Europe and other things. That's where I think the president runs the risk of losing these mm. farmers. When it comes to like China, I think they're on board and even at, even at their own bottom line right now. Okay, so let's go to the, the foreign dirt story. I, I wanna ask you a real <laughs> simple question. Is what the president suggested taking ABBA research from a foreign national, legal or illegal? I think it's illegal, and if it's not, then we need to for sure define it as illegal. Uh, the question is, you know, the election law, what is the thing of value? Uh, my understanding is that is illegal uh, to yeah. take information like that. But again, if it's not, we need to put that in law. There is no point at which, and this isn't a matter, I don't want to like look back and say these people did it and then these people, I just think, okay, right now is a great time for us to just say, okay, going forward, yeah. nobody takes information from a foreign government because listen, just from a, outside of what's right and wrong, they could shop the same kind of information to your opponent. But beyond That's right. that, we can't be a country influenced by another country in our election, period. Well, but Trump has faced very little rebuke from Republicans in Congress over saying his FBI director was wrong, over saying he'd take that illegal information. Senator Blackburn, in fact, blocked a bipartisan foreign interference bill. She was applauded for it on Twitter by Trump. So what, what, when are Republicans going to step in and make sure that this doesn't happen? Well, I, you know, I, look, if you talk to all of them kind of privately, we all agree. Here's the problem. What There's good does privately do? I, I'm so, I, and this is not against know, you, but I am me, so sick of hearing Republicans, when they talk privately, yeah. say one thing. What good does that do anyone? I agree, but here's the, here's the issue I'm getting at. So yeah. every day there's kind of a new outrage, and about 70% of them are, aren't any Trump's doing. I think it's stuff taken out of context. When it came to this information, for instance, I took a little bit of time to actually see all this set in context before I made a comment on it. And my comment is, you can't take foreign information from a foreign yeah. government. So, uh, yeah, look, I wish people would speak out more about stuff like this. I don't think, honestly, I don't think the president was soliciting foreign information. I think he was maybe being a little cute by half on this. But hmm. at the point, realize that this is an outrage. You should simply say what's obvious to all of us, you can't take information from a foreign government. Well, so your colleague in the House, Justin Amash, um, as you know, publicly laid out his case for why he thinks the president committed impeachable offenses. Since then, he's resigned from the Freedom Caucus. He's down 16 points in his Republican primary. Kevin McCarthy slammed him by saying he questions whether he's a Republican anymore. Um, I'm sure you know Justin Amash has one of the most conservative voting records in the House. 
Is the new definition of Republican just undying loyalty to whatever Trump says or does? No, I don't think so. Uh, I actually, I never really considered Justin Amash a Republican in the beginning, and I'll explain why. I like him personally, right? But politically, he's a libertarian. Now, some right, libertarian right. views are welcome in the Republican Party, but he's a total libertarian, wants a smaller military, votes against military budgets, votes against pro-Israel stuff. Every, you know, basically anti-genocide resolution we have that come up, he comes up, he votes against, votes yeah. against every budget. So he never votes like me. Now, if you don't consider me a Republican, that's one thing, mm -hmm. but I've never really considered him any. I think he's a libertarian masquerading as a Republican. But that said, I, again, I like him personally. I'm just saying on the politics, I never really considered him that way anyway.